Hello folks, welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. Today's feature, we're going to be diving into the top tools that you could be utilizing whilst remote working. I'm gonna be going through a range of categories that I think will be useful. With everything that's happening, I think these tools might be useful for keeping things going, but also keeping yourself calm and relaxed during the process. So folks, without further ado, let's roll into today's video. Okay, so the first tool I wanted to mention is an app called Loom. And there's an alternative as well that I'd like to mention called Cloud App. Now, the reason why I mention this first is because it is a great way for teams to communicate without necessarily having to jump on a video call every single time. Now, the concept of Loom and Cloud App is to create these short screen recordings demonstrating th something that you're talking about. Maybe it's a bit of website design or a, a way or process of doing something. Now, the great thing about doing these Loom or Cloud apps is you can share them instantly to someone through a communication service you may use. But what's cool as well is, as we'll talk about later on, you could add these short processes into a wiki tool to help future employees learn. And it almost helps to reduce siloed information. Now, Loom and Cloud App aren't only beneficial for those communicating with each other within a team. They're also beneficial for communicating with customers. You can do webcam recordings of yourself or explain something on a screen to someone without necessarily having to jump on a video call and going into a bit more detail than you would, making it quite personal as well. So you can download both of them. They've both got free versions and they're reasonably priced if you do want to go past the limits that they set. But when I first started remote working, this was one of the best ways to help reduce confusion about something, quickly sending over a screen recording. But I also used it with the community to explain a feature and to make it a bit more personal for them um, and actually going through a process. So guys, as we go through this, I'll make sure to include a timestamped list below with all of the app. Okay, so the second tools that I want to recommend are around communication. Now, if you and your team don't already communicate through a communication tool like Slack, then I'd recommend it. Normally, I don't traditionally recommend Slack. Um, there are other tools. Microsoft Teams is another good one. But there is one more that promotes something called asynchronous communication. The asynchronous communication tool is an application called Twist. And what it does is it creates threads um, if, of your conversations versus necessarily opening up to real-time chat like tools like Slack and Microsoft Teams do. Now, of course, there are so many benefits to real-time communication. You can get something done as you're talking. There's also a negative as well. You, for example, would be focusing all of your attention on that thing, um, and you may have several com conversations going on, and it can be um, a bit of a time zapper. And if, for example, that person is away, you might not be able to get back to them and you might not be able to complete the task in time. But with asynchronous communication, it actually promotes more you respond in your own time as you complete certain tasks. Now, I'll actually include more details about this and also my review on Twist, but that's the application that I go with. And if I'm honest, I much prefer using it against Slack because I can actually start threads that are based on a piece of work that needs to get done, which is more goal orientated. But all of those tools I'd recommend having as a remote worker, especially if you work with teams. Okay, so number three, this is something a lot of people don't think of, is having a wiki tool that allows them to capture all of this siloed information. Now, if you've gone remote or you're working from home, it sometimes can be tricky because you may miss out on bits of information that are maybe trapped inside of, say, Slack um, or Microsoft Teams. And as you can imagine across a day, that information is just stuck inside of that. It may be searchable, but at the same time, um, say you want a guide or process on how to do something or a useful article, it's worth thinking of having a wiki tool like Notion, Slab, or Tetra. These are all really good wiki tools that allow you to create this sort of bank of information for you and your team so that you can continually add to it, creating processes, but also a guidebook for future employees that may join your company. Now, many people currently use things like Microsoft SharePoint. These Notion, Slab, and Tetra are more modern solutions. They're a bit more attractive. And of course, they do have their pricing plans, but I'll make sure to add them all below. 
Okay, so number four, I think when you're working from home, it can get a bit overwhelming, particularly if you're doing work all day and you may not be as stringent on the time periods you work. For example, some bosses may uh, be pointing and saying, you don't have a commute anymore, so you should work during your commute time. Or for example, they might continue messaging after say 5 p.m., which is a traditional shutoff point. So one of the best ways to separate yourself from work and uh, sort of enjoy the home is to do a bit of meditation. And although this sounds a little bit cheesy, it can help you almost have a bit of buffer time if you're able to have that time to really separate yourself from work life. So if, for example, you're someone that struggles with separating themselves from a working day, then maybe at 5.30, take some time with an application called Oak Meditation to spend maybe a 15 minute meditation. And after that, you'll feel definitely more relaxed and ready to enjoy the evening and sort of take your mind away from work. So there's plenty of other ways that you could say reduce your impact of working and sort of blending the two. And they could be, for example, making sure you don't work in the bedroom, uh, try to work in a, a space that has a lot of light coming in, and also to get up routinely, make cups of tea and enjoy the household. But it's also about association, so you don't necessarily want to spend your time on your laptop in the bedroom because then you'll be going to sleep and you'll be associating the two things, work and relaxing. Another great tool is 10% Happier, and I believe at the moment they're doing a promotion which will allow you to get some free access, um, and also I know Headspace is also doing some promotional plans at this time. Okay, so number five is a, a really given tool. It's one that I've been using for a while and it's Zoom. I always tend to use Zoom above other tools. Uh, the main reason behind that is because it's got really reliable uh, connectivity. It always seems to have consistent connection. And the second thing is the recording ability. A lot of teams like to have their meetings recorded, whether that's just the audio or just having files available to them that they could potentially put inside of their wiki so that other team members can find it and be able to access it. You can use the record feature and download whatever you finish with. You could upload that to Drive or another application that you may use. So I recommend Zoom Conference and Call. It's one that I've been using for maybe three or four years now and find it consistently reliable. So number six is the use of podcasting or audiobook networks. And the main reason behind this is to give yourself something to uh, focus on in the afternoons. You may not necessarily want to do some reading, although reading is a great way to sort of break up the day. Getting five minutes to read when you have a break can be a great way just to sort of relax a bit more, take a little bit of tension off, um, and you could separate yourself, for example, go and sit down on the sofa and read, but also work in uh, your office or kitchen, wherever you find suitable. But Audible is a great way to read audiobooks, and sometimes when I'm working, I have them playing over the top, because I sometimes find that that information sinks in as I'm doing a repetitive or easy task um, that I may be working on. The other one I recommended is Castro. Castro is a great podcasting application. It helps to capture your podcast episodes in an inbox so you can process which ones you want to listen to. And it's a great way to open your phone in the morning and listen to a quick 15 minute podcast. Maybe you wanna use the same time you would be listening to podcasts as your commute time. So you may wanna keep the same um, and uh, make sure you take advantage of that time. Okay, so number seven and my final recommendations are password managers. This is something I actually didn't invest in um, the first few years of being remote, but over time it's definitely become a lot more beneficial, especially in the last six months. If you want to use a password manager, it's a great way for you and your team to be able to share passwords securely using the team plans to, for example, give them access to uh, the vault. Um, I know there's some great uh, abilities in LastPass and One Password at allowing you to share passwords with other people, but without um, worrying about security because it's highly encrypted. So those applications are really recommended and I think uh, they're a great investment, especially if you're looking to get ready and share uh, amongst a big team. 
So folks, uh, my biggest recommendation for working from home is to take real care of yourself. Uh, it's important to maybe separate yourself from work and life. And if you're brand new to this, it can be really daunting. But uh, believe me, over time, like a muscle, you can train it and improve it. Um, so definitely keep working at it each day. There's a concept by James Clear, 1% progressive. So you just look and focus on working 1% better every day and uh, you'll be fantastic in no time. Tomorrow I will be doing a live stream about seven tips from working from home. Um, it will also give advice about managerial stuff, but I'll make sure to include that video if it's already gone past that you can watch in the description below. If you're new here, folks, please do hit subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, please do like it and share it with a colleague that you may want to recommend some of these applications. But folks, thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Cheers, everyone. Bye.